While attention has focused on the Kakovka Dam disaster in Ukraine this week, the long-heralded counteroffensive has been underway for a few days now. There's an awful lot riding on it. Ukraine is committing a carefully husbanded reserve of units trained and equipped by the West, hoping to free large tracts of occupied territory. Unsurprisingly, given the stakes, President Zelensky's government has been tight-lipped about it, with one or two officials even claiming it hadn't started. But events on the battlefield show us clearly that it has. A rude reminder in her son today of that wider war coming to a key phase. People trying to rescue those stranded by the flooding coming under Russian artillery fire. If the flooding has achieved anything of military value, it's to deny the Ukrainians a possible route of advance south of the Dnipro. It's moot whether they ever planned to do that, but attention anyway is now fixed further east. The key fighting of the counteroffensive launched at the start of this week is an attempt to drive southwards towards Melitopol in this area between Zaporizhia and Vulidar, and also fighting around Bakhmut in the northeast. If we zoom in, we can get a sense of an advance that's taken place around Zaporizhia. Stills from drone footage released by the Russians this week show pieces of equipment associated with Ukraine's Western trained reserve brigades being fed into that battle. French heavy armoured cars apparently abandoned earlier this week. And overnight, moving pictures emerged of Leopard 2 tanks, among the most precious of those Western weapons deliveries, in action on that key axis. Independent researchers have geolocated that footage to these locations around 40 miles southeast of Zaporizhia. And while little the Russians say about losses caused to those Ukrainian columns can be taken at face value, the basic facts that the Ukrainians have committed those units to the fight and where it's happening appear to be clear now, as indeed evidence of some losses of Leopard 2 tanks and American-made personnel carriers. And the images we've seen this week suggest that three of the nine Ukrainian NATO-trained brigades the 33rd, 37th Marines and 47th are feeding troops into this battle in the south. How do we know this? Because the discord leaks in America included information about which units had which signature pieces of Western equipment. How far has the Ukrainian advance got? Well, this map, based on research by a Finnish expert, shows the situation a little earlier this week and suggests some progress, a few kilometres, but they're still a good way short of the main Russian defensive lines. But that's not the only place where the Ukrainians have gained ground. Over in the northeast, that cauldron of violence, Bakhmut, has also been the scene of some Ukrainian gains of a few kilometres in recent gain days. There's some suggestion even of a possible pincer attack to try and cut the Russian defenders of the city off, but that would still have a good way to go before there's any realistic possibility of that. The units committed in Bakhmut, like the 3rd Storm Brigade here, are not part of Ukraine's strategic reserve, but that could easily change. Overall, the Ukrainian military is still feeling its way if, hypothetically say, its uncommitted reserve brigades were in that shaded area, they would be able to swing south or east depending on where the greatest progress was being made. To sum up, the types of unit committed and the direction of the attacks leave no doubt that the ground phase of Ukraine's counteroffensive began earlier this week and that some key brigades have already started to be committed. Progress so far has been modest, but then this could take weeks to unfold.